ride in one for the unintelligent as fellas get. Listen, let's settle this. Be clear, I can fall back seven years. Still, it ain't no one ahead of me. Consider it a blessing if you get to stand next to me. Five star general, OG veteran. What's up everybody and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. As I was going to bed last night, or in the morning, um, I go to bed at like 4 in the morning. Erin was getting up and getting ready for work. She does her cardio right, um, right pretty much when I'm getting ready to go to bed. And she said, did you hear that uh, another wrestler died? And I was like, what wrestler? Because I haven't spent a kind of a while since I've heard of any of the wrestlers passing away. And she said, China. And I said, fuck. I said, you know, her name is Joni. And she said, yeah, that, that's her. So I kind of looked up real quick to see what was going on. It looks like it's an apparent drug overdose. And it's been a while since I've seen anyone fucking in wrestling actually die of a drug overdose. It's actually very curtailed lately because of the fact that the WWE has gone to great lengths to stop the painkiller abuse that's been going on in pro wrestling. It was extremely bad in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, mid-2000s. I'd say all the way up to maybe 2010 or maybe before that it kind of slowed down. But while WCW was going... ECW painkillers were so widespread and so fucking rampant that everybody was fucking doing them. Painkillers and muscle relaxers. That were the two things. Um, Soma was the big muscle relaxer. Everybody was fucking swallowing. And painkiller-wise, it could have been Vicodin, Percocet, Oxycontin. It could have been fucking a host of things, including um, um, Nubane at the time. Now, the thing is that we have here is, looking back, I do remember, you know, a lot of the wrestlers taking stuff. A lot of the wrestlers smoked weed did cocaine. I mean, there was various drugs going around. Some of them actually drank quite a bit. Um, the ones that didn't really have to maintain their physique kind of drank more than the others. Um, you know, some of the guys who did have physiques have a couple beers here and there, but a lot of the guys used the painkillers just to get high and get fucked up. I mean, that's pretty much what it was. It was a way to um, kind of make things easier on the road. Essentially, a lot of guys are traveling a lot of the time. Um, I was in the independence, which meant that I was doing different shows that were fairly local to the area, but I would have maybe a two or three hour drive to get to where I needed to go. And we would actually practice Monday, Wednesday, and um, Friday we would have practices. And sometimes it was actually matches on Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday. We'd travel all three days to get to wherever the fuck we were going. And I don't know how much you guys know, you know about this, but if you look it up, you can find it pretty easily. It's pretty readily available, the information about painkillers and wrestlers dying. And it's a combination of painkillers in booze being mixed together. Alcohol and painkillers together, which causes deadly combination that actually shuts your respiratory system down and will fucking kill you. You go to sleep one night all fucked up and feeling great and you fucking just won't wake up. I mean, it's happened to I don't know how many fucking, you know, wrestlers out there over time. And it became such a problem that the WWE wellness kind of plan had to be created towards where they were doing drug testing and they've actually put people through rehab that aren't even with the company anymore. There are people that have been out of the WWE for years and they actually are, you know, like uh, Scott Hall, um, Jake the Snake Roberts, guys that have, you know, since retired from the ring that were still fucked up on drugs that the WWE still kept putting through rehab, like paying the money to put them through rehab because they knew, you know, fucking, it was basically the business itself and what was going on and that put them in that fucking position. You know, it wasn't the WWE themselves. They're responsible for their own actions, but the business and the 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 way that the, the business is run and the things that come with it are what put them in that position to make the poor choices. And many of them did. And, you know, I got to say kudos to the WWE, but, you know, going back and talking about China, she'd been in quite a few um, reality TV type things. And she had like a porn tape that came out with fucking her ex, Sean Waltman, X-Pac. And... It was easy to see very quickly by watching these, these not the part of watching these um, these TV shows with her and it being herself and not China, that you could see there was a very tortured individual, very tortured, and part of that torture actually came. And I you know, I remember watching this and I just felt sadness for her, was the fact that she was a naturally bigger, and had a jo you know, bigger than the average girl athletic wise, frame wise, height wise, all that stuff. She had a jaw line that was a little bit different even in high school before she started lifting. And she started lifting to try to create something for herself that, you know, eventually did lead her to the WWE. It gave, made her famous. It gave her money. It fucking gave her a, an outlet to actually be her and use her very specific gifts. I call them gifts. You know, some people call them a curse. You're built like a guy and you're a woman. 
they were gifts that were given to her to go out there and and kind of I don't want to say usher in, but she was like the first fe- one of the first females that were actually in the the ring wrestling that kind of ushered in a new era of girls that would go in the ring, the divas, that now the divas are like, you know, doing all these fucking crazy luchador moves and shit. Like she was kind of the beginning in the attitude era of ushering these women in and not just having like the, uh, the, the dolls they're called, you know, like dolls meaning like these pretty girls that go in there and do these couple fake punches and grab each other by the hair and do this. Like she was doing moves, giving pedigrees, suplexes, she was doing shit, body slamming the guys and that stuff has kind of transcended over into what we see now. So in essence, you know, China was a pioneer. You know, when she hit the fucking scene, she was one of a kind. And, you know, to think back and think that she was the ugly duckling in high school. And she got picked on it. All this bad shit happened to her. And one by one, she took those bad things and kind of turned them into something positive that created a whole new fucking life and character for her to be successful. But in the end, inside, she was still that kid in high school being picked on. And, you know, drug use came with that. You saw it with... You know, the, um, the, the reality shows there was something really deep-seated in her that hadn't been worked on. And I don't know if it's like a lack of like therapy or what the fucking case. I, you know, I'm not a fucking doctor. But I mean, you could just see it was very clear that there was something in her that just had not gotten to the point of actually accepting herself and accepting what had happened to her. The people had been mean. Whatever the fuck else had happened to her. And um, apparently, you know, after all the success, you would think when somebody's that successful and they become... In the wrestling world, you know, a top name. I don't know if she was in the Hall of Fame or not. I mean, she probably will be now in the Hall of Fame after she passed away. She belongs in the Hall of Fame, to be honest with you, by doing what she did. You know, they still have problems. They still can take drugs. They can still relapse. They can go through rehab, rehabs. They can do everything that they fucking is the right way and still slip and go backwards. If, if the original issues that caused you to do it are not worked on first. That was my key for getting sober and staying sober. You know, and I watch these people and I realize after watching those, those shows and stuff that she wasn't, you know, working. She hadn't worked on those things and they were still kind of eating at her and it, it just sucks. You know, to hear shit like this, like, like I said, I don't know her, but I know people that did know her. And those people that did know her said that she was just always fucking lively and she never was a fucking asshole for any reason. As much as people were assholes to her in the beginning, she wasn't an asshole in the end. She was a little out there, but drugs do that to you. So rest in peace, China. I'm BioS3 and I approve this message and we're out.